Okay. Uh, thanks very much, everyone, for coming. I just had a bit of a bad morning this morning. I was up at 3 a.m. to get the flight from London Luton, but I still didn't get to this place until five minutes ago. So I'm a bit panicky, and I can't get my clicker to work. So we'll see how it goes anyway. It's not the world's biggest stage. So do you really need that estimate? It's what I'm going to talk about. That's me. You don't need to know too much about me. Let's move on. So just two, two sections. I'm going to talk about why am I talking about estimates, and then we'll debunk some of the myths around estimation. So why am I doing this talk? Well, uh, there's a conference in London called DevOps UK, of which runs uh, in June. And they did this thing called Blind Ignite, which was uh, a five-minute presentation where you had uh, 20 slides. The thing moved on every 15 seconds, um, but I'd never seen the slides before in my life. So they, they asked all the speakers, would you be willing to do this thing? And I thought, yeah, sounds like fun, so I'll do that. Um, obviously, I had a few beers before I did it. Then I got up on stage in a room, a bit similar to this. And the first slide that came up was that. And I looked at it behind me on this screen, and I said, that is what I feel like at the start of a project when somebody says to me, tell me how long this is going to take. I'm like, I have got no idea why are you asking me this now when I've got absolutely the least possible idea whatsoever. So I went on and I ranted for five minutes about estimates. And then at the end of that talk, one of the people at DevOps UK said to me, you should do a lightning talk about that estimates. Bring it out a bit more. And I was like, OK, fine, because I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a topic that annoys not just me in this world. So what is it about estimates? Well, here's one thing. It doesn't matter how often you stand there and say, I don't know, I don't know. If you give the slightest, slightest hint of any date, any date whatsoever, somebody in that room is going to get a hammer and chisel and do that. They are going to carve it in stone in front of your very eyes. That happens every time. No matter how often you say, it's a guess, I've got no idea, how can I possibly know? This is just my finger in the air. Somebody comes back with a tablet of stone. Or they'll get you to do this. And you know what? It won't be ink that you sign that contract in, because they'll do this as well. You will be signing that contract in your blood. So that's my fear of estimates, and that's what I've experienced throughout my entire life. As soon as you just have a guess, that's what happens. So let's talk about some of the myths of estimation. Why might people think that an estimate is a good idea? So I've, I've had a lot of thoughts down the years about it. So before I go into that, has anybody seen this picture before? So I googled for um, something called, well, the project management triangle. Um, I think this idea goes way back when, back into civil engineering projects back in the day. The idea is if you fix uh, assuming a, a fixed level of quality, um, you can either fix scope and time, and then cost will vary, or you can fix scope and cost, and time will vary, or so on. So you cannot know how long, how long the thing is going to take. So it's a bit like the cap theorem in database technology, right? You can have two of the three, but you can't have all three. That's an absolute fact. Actually, in software delivery, I tend to say that quality is, should be an invariant. That's, that's rolled into what you do. So I'm not sure that should be there, really. But anyway, these days, and I don't know how wide this is, sometimes we hear talk of the iron triangle. Now, in my mind, what this means, because I tried to find a uh, consistent definition, and I couldn't. So this is going to say pretty much, oh, in my screen, it's rolled on. There you go. As I said, cost and scope could be fixed, so time goes in. One of those constraints has to be relaxed. Now, that's an absolute law of nature. I mean, unless you're very, very clever, much cleverer than me, that's a law of nature. And every time your project manager or your stakeholder or your person in the business that owns the product comes to you and says, give me a date, that is fixing the iron triangle. That is not possible. It's absolutely, it can't happen. So you need to be aware of that and, and make our, our people that ask us, well, yeah, I need to know how long it takes. Well, why? OK, so you can't possibly know it. So here's, here's some of the reasons why I've had down in my career why people have come to me and said, I need to know how long this is going to take. I need an estimate. So um, I'm sorry, I use cats to represent 
idiots. I, 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 it's not because I'm not a cat lover. It's just that cats are very selfish, and they don't tend to listen to their owners. Sorry. They don't tend to listen to the humans that they own. So here's, here's a classic. This person comes up and says, well, I need to know how long this thing is going to take. And I always say to them, why? Well, why does it matter? Why, does, why would that change what, what decisions are going to be made? Either it's good enough, we're going to do it, or it's not. But I mean, no, that might be a bit simplistic. Or then maybe I think something like this. So, you know what? You've already fixed the scope. You've already fixed the cost because you ain't giving me any more resources to do this. You're, now you're asking for a time. You're fixing the iron triangle. It's not going to happen. Please, go back to the drawing board. Ask me a different question. Ask me one that I can possibly answer. OK. So sometimes you see something like this. She comes along and she says to me, there's a deadline. It has to be done by this date. Well, in that case, you're not asking me how long something's going to take. You're telling me <laughs> that that's not the question. You know, maybe, maybe I've got a tiny bit of sympathy if that deadline means something, like say we're a retailer and the deadline is Christmas. Maybe that makes a bit of sense. But then the question isn't how long is this going to take. The question should be, what can we get done by that date? They're asking the wrong question. And again, they're fixing the iron triangle because they're telling me how long it's going to take. So what else might she ask for? Let's have a look. Someone's saying, they need to, I need to tell you, you need me to tell you how long it's going to take so that I can know the cost. I kind of, I've heard this one before, and I'm kind of like, that, that, that doesn't make sense either. Um, it, if you think it's the most important thing to do in the business, then that's, we're going to do it, right? Cost is also nothing more than a calculation of the amount of time taken by the number of people doing it multiplied presumably by the premises cost. So again, I think you're closing the iron triangle with that excuse. So I don't know yet whether I've come across, out of all those reasons, any good reason yet. So let's see if we've got any more. OK, here's this product owner. She's saying, if we do an estimate now, then we're going to go back and use that estimate to see how accurate it was. OK, why? Well, because we want to accurate more effectively in the future. OK, why? And then we end up going down the same route where the, she still wants to fix the iron triangle. Um, and also, here's another thing. No matter how many times she tells you that she's not going to use these estimates that you give her at the start, the ones that she promises you are just going to be used to understand how good we are at estimating, no. The chisel and the piece of stone will come out once again. So in this case, I don't believe you. Because this has happened to me. Like last year in a thing I worked on, someone came and badgered and badgered, and I kept saying to the team, no, no, don't give a date, don't give a date, don't give a date. What we need to do is report honestly throughout the project. Uh, somebody said, well, I think it ought to be done by June. And then it was announced by the CEO in some conference the next day. It's unbelievable. So, you know, be very careful about that. And they're always lying. So, that's a bit of a rant. I apologize, but I can see by the number of people in the room that there's a bit of sympathy with me there. <laughs> so what's the truth about estimates? Well, here's a statistic that I've heard. That wasn't me, by the way, although it sounded quite good, didn't it? It was, it was almost like I timed it deliberately. 100% of estimates are wrong, and 90% of them are wildly inaccurate. And do you know why I know that's true? Because I made that up last week. But you know what? That's about as accurate as an estimate you will ever get in the circumstances that people will ask you for them. It's a guess. The earlier I do it in the delivery, the less accurate it's going to be. People need to understand that. This is the truth of estimates. That's why they're called estimates. In English, if you go into Roger's Thesaurus and look up estimate, it will tell you that guess means the same thing. And yet somehow, somewhere, people think there's a load of pseudoscience that somehow validates them. Which brings me on to the next question. Has anybody sat down in a room and played all sorts of elaborate games with mathematics and stuff where they end up with a number? And is it, d does that still happen? So yeah, I thought it did. Um, we used to call this pseudoscience when I worked at ThoughtWorks. And um, I don't know how well that translates into other languages, but you know, it, it means pretend science, right? And there was an, a real occasion where a project manager took myself and another tech lead 
out to lunch to try and persuade us to go and do an estimation session. She had to bribe us with lunch. We both absolutely refused. Actually, there was three of us, myself and another chap called Robin. We refused, but there was a third tech lead, and she said, all right. She, she looked at us two and said, I can see you two are not going to do it. And I said to the project manager, you know what? I'm happy to go along with this to the thing, but if I go along, I know I won't be able to help myself disrupting the meeting, so I think it's probably better if I don't go. And she said, fair enough. And she said, I just need to get a number to take to the client. And Robin just said, all right, I'll give you a number, 43. And then the others went away for like two hours in a room, locked themselves up, and did a load of pseudoscience. And then Susie came to me and Robin and said, you'll never guess what happened. We were, we were using this measure of complexity, and the answer was 43. It, I, I kid you not, that is a true story, which just goes to show that no matter how much pseudoscience you think you're doing, it's, it's just rubbish. <clears throat> okay. I'm now going to give you the one accurate estimate you will ever see. And here it is. It's a pie chart. Here's my estimate. That's the amount of pie that I've eaten, and that's the amount of pie that I haven't eaten yet. That is the only accurate estimate you'll see. So if we're not going to do estimates, what are we going to do? Now, this is the one, my one serious point. What we do is, and I hope that's visible, this is something we call the cone of uncertainty. In any project, this is, to me, a sensible piece of estimation. The solid line down here, this is the stuff we've already done. These are scope lines. The first one, this is our MVP. This one is, hey, this is the bonus stuff. And this third one is, wow, we've done really well. So what we do every week on the projects that I work on, we have some measure of recording progress, whether that be uh, features delivered or whatever. There's some measure of us doing that. This is reported openly and honesty. And from this point onwards, we say, well, if things go wrong, that will be where the line goes. If it goes as it's gone so far, that will be the line. If it goes really well, that will be the line. So that gives us what I think is, is the, a decent level of honesty and, and prediction on what we can do. So we can kind of see there that if things go badly wrong, we'll still get our MVP out sometime in December. If it goes well, we'll probably do the second level stuff by December. And if it goes really well, geez, the, um, we're going to get promoted. So, oh, there you go. And there's my explanation of it. This shows how often I've done this deck before. I only made it this week. So that, that we call the cone of uncertainty. And that's, that, to me, is, is the best level of estimates that we should all stick to. That, that reports, honestly, the uncertainty. It gives a good, honest picture. And it tells people what they need to know. If they want to take that picture and carve it in stone, well, good luck to them, because you've actually got evidence that they carved something in stone that shouldn't have been carved in stone. So my final question is, can estimating ever be valuable? Is it ever worthwhile to estimate this, this project, this thing, this feature? Well, I suspect it is, because sometimes somebody comes to us and says this, I want to have an idea of what it costs, so that I can use to help it prioritize. Now, to me, this makes a bit of sense. If I've got a feature that is going to return 100 units of value to my business, but it's going to take me a year to put into production, I've got another feature that's going to return 90 units of value to the business, but it's only going to take me a month to get into production, then clearly I should do that second feature first, because I'm going to get 11 months' worth of, of 90 value points before I hit the other thing. So it makes sense to do that one first. So in those circumstances, I think it's actually worthwhile to do some estimates. However, there is one thing I'll say about this. Do not waste your time with pseudoscience. Do not spend your life trying to accurately estimate those features down to the hour, down to the minute, down to the developer dollar, or whatever your crazy fine-grained metric is. Just do something like this. And this is something I was doing last week. Standard consultancy quadrant. Here we've got low value stuff. Up there we've got high value stuff. This is stuff that's hard to do. This is stuff that's easy to do. Put all the stuff on that quadrant approximately where you think it ought to go in terms of those two axes. And this works for so many things. And then just look at the quadrant and do the stuff up there. And that, to me, is as accurate as you should ever go with estimates. So my top five estimating tips, just to finish with, you need to respect the iron triangle and make sure that you tell everybody that's getting you to abuse it to respect it. Trust your development teams. Right? One of the biggest reasons, which I didn't touch upon, for people demanding estimates is because they don't trust the team. 
If you trust the team, you don't need to have this pseudo contract, the thing written in the blood of the tech leader. You need to embrace that uncertainty. You need to make people understand that uncertainty and honestly report that uncertainty. As I say, I can't say it enough, the cone of uncertainty, oh, there you go, I've said it again, is a great way to do that. Do not get drawn into pseudoscience. Your life is too short. Every time you get dragged into one of those meetings, it will be an hour and a half of your life that you will never get back, but you will always resent. And finally, do not ever give anybody a date. Thank you very much.